Let's have a look at the left hand now. The soft pad of the thumb should be at the thickest part of the neck where it's curved. There's always a temptation to move the thumb up and almost hook it around the top. But try and avoid this as it makes it really difficult for fingers 3 and 4 to reach some of the strings and frets. The frets are the metal bars that divide the guitar fingerboard. But when we talk about placing a finger in a fret, we're actually referring to the spaces between the metal bars. So, the first fret would be the space between this white nut and the first metal bar. This area would be the second fret, and so on. Exact finger placement is crucial to a clear sound. Place your first finger on string 5, the A string, in the second fret, and hold the string down using the tip of the finger. Try and get your finger as close to fret 2 as possible without actually touching the metal. This should give you a clear note. Too far away from fret 2 and the string becomes harder to hold down with more chance of a dull or buzzing note. Too far over the second fret and the string is unable to vibrate properly, producing a dull sound. Try holding the string down in various places within the fret space and listen to the sound you produce when you pluck the note. It would be quite easy to play a tune just by moving the first finger from one fret to another. But it's much better to practice using the other fingers, even though it might be a little more tricky at first. Let's try a little exercise which we can later turn into another piece. With your first finger still on the A string in fret 2, pluck that same string with your right thumb, P, as we did before. Staying on the same string, put finger 2 into the next fret, fret number 3. Again, strike the same string using the P rest stroke. Remember to push down towards the floor with the thumb coming to rest on the D string. Now finger number three in fret number four, using the thumb to play it as before. If you can keep all three fingers down in their respective frets, so much the better. But if it's a stretch too far at first, just place one finger down at a time. When you're comfortable with that, try going back down the frets again like this. 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret. Now for our second melody, using those same frets. Play exactly the same thing as before, going up and down from the 2nd fret to the 4th fret and back again. This time, I want you to add another string. String 6, the thickest E string, after every note you play. No need to hold any frets down on this string. When a string is sounded without any left hand fingers touching it, it's called playing an open string. So, one note on the A string, followed by an open E. Next note on the A string, followed by open E, etc. Have you noticed that when you play a rest stroke on the E string, the moment your thumb comes to rest on the A string, it stops the A string from sounding. What we really need is for both strings to carry on ringing until we pluck it again. To make this happen, we need to alter the way that the right thumb strikes the string. This time when you play, instead of pressing down with the thumb towards the floor, strike the string without coming into contact with the string next to it. This is called a free stroke, or in Spanish, a tirando stroke. Watch carefully while I alternate between the two types of stroke so that you can see the difference. Let's try the exercise slowly. 8 beats introduction. Hmm, sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? 
When you've played our second melody through a few times, you can try it while a more complex tune is played over the top, just as we did before. Thank you. 